They have 63 genders up there, but they can't have my gender. Before becoming synonymous with YouTube, superstar Mr. Beast and then surprising their fan base with the news that they were undergoing hormone replacement therapy, content creator Chris Tyson was born on July 1st, 1996 in Greenville, North Carolina. During a childhood spent growing up in their hometown, Chris would meet Jimmy Donaldson, aka the future Mr. Beast, and the two youngsters immediately hit it off, becoming fast friends. In fact, when Jimmy would later launch his very first YouTube channel, known at the time as Mr. Beast 6000. It was while both of them were students at the Greenville Christian Academy. And guess what? Chris was the very first person to ever subscribe to Jimmy's channel. When asked by the Business Insider about this crucial moment in their early life, Chris told the media outlet, I remember the day he created it. Me and him were hanging out at his house. I made sure I was the first person to subscribe when he made the channel. From that point forward, Chris would become Mr. Beast's most trusted collaborator, helping him film numerous videos. Once Chris moved off to college, they continued to assist Jimmy any way that they could. Could, while splitting time between classes and working part-time at Best Buy. Eventually, Chris was faced with an important decision shortly after finishing college and earning an entry-level job at the organization they had created, interned at Jimmy, approaching his childhood best friend and asked, hey, I know you worked really hard for that job, but can you quit it and just come work for me? Tyson didn't have to think about it for long. They said yes to their longtime friend and haven't regretted that decision for a minute since. When Chris first officially joined Mr. Beast full-time, the channel only had around 700,000 subscribers. That's certainly a decent sized number, no doubt about it, but it pales in comparison to where they are today. Seven years later, after joining Jimmy on his YouTube journey, Donaldson and Chris would have earned over 30 million subscribers on YouTube, putting the channel they built together in the upper echelon of social media and content creation accomplishments. Mr. Beast went through a particularly substantial period of growth in 2018 after uploading a video which he orders water at a series of different restaurants for leaving tips of $10,000. Pretty great tip if you ask me. It didn't take long for social media outlets, Pix11 News, and Inside Edition to pick up that story and run with it, which led to more exposure than ever for this industrial duo. Chris told Business Insider a few years later that when it really became real for us, that this had the potential to blow up like it did. As Donald's empire continued to grow, he recruited more and more of his friends to help him out, probably because the first time worked out so well with Chris. Since then, Chris and the rest of these friends have become massively popular personalities in their own right and appear in many of Mr. Beast's videos. According to Chris, working for Mr. Beast is an exciting experience and Jimmy often takes his team out for travel sprees where they travel the world and film amazing videos, sometimes for weeks at a time. And of course, their careers together, Chris and Jimmy have traveled all over the globe, but Chris' all-time favorite trip was when they once spent 24 hours in California sand dunes only to stumble into a production crew who were busy filming Jumanji. If that doesn't give you an idea of how hectic their life and schedule can be, then maybe this will give you a better one. According to Chris, the team has often days where they have to wake up at 6 a.m. just to record something. That being said, he's also willing to admit that there are nearly just as many days when they don't have to wake up until closer to 1 p.m. Chris might have been the first person to join the team, but he's one of the few two dozen employees now, including multiple video editors and writers, all of whom collaborated together on Mr. Beast content ideas from inception all the way to completion. And if not at all unusual, for Chris to be in charge of a team of half a dozen camera crews recording for 24 hours straight with as much as 80 hours of footage to comb through. Of course, sometimes an idea sounds better on paper than it necessarily does in reality. Like the time that Chris and Jimmy came up with the idea to build their very own catapult or make a zoo out of animal crackers and goldfish, both of which failed so spectacularly and never made it onto camera. Having to scrap video ideas that had already cost them upwards of $60,000. That's an expensive lesson taught them what they need to iron out their thought process when it comes to creating the content. But even with all these incredible success they found since then, Tyson is still shocked at what they've accomplished together, telling Business Insider, never in a million years would I think that it would get to this point. It's crazy for us to think that this is just the beginning of everything. Of course, being a social media maven, all around content creator King isn't the only process Chris is still in the beginning stages of. After carving out a life for themselves that they never dreamt possible, Chris married their longtime sweetheart, 
Katie Tyson in 2018, eventually becoming their first child, a son named Tucker, two years later. Right around the same time that their family was expanding came the somewhat surprising news that Chris had concluded that they were bisexual. During the course of this revelation, Chris also revealed that they were only 16 years old when they came out to the people closest to them. Unfortunately, this news was not well received at the time. Since then, however, there's been a major change. Just a few days ago, Mr. Beast's longtime co-star shared a post revealing that they were undergoing hormone replacement therapy after someone online inquired as to why their physical appearance had shifted so dramatically in recent months. Recognized as part of the gender affirming treatment, feminizing hormone replacement therapy is when a doctor gives a patient hormone medication to lessen male physical characteristics, increase their female ones. According to Chris, they've been going undergoing hormone replacement therapy for just two months and at this point has really saved their life. In fact, this dramatic increase in their overall happiness has led them at a loss as to why so many other people are often chastised for making informed decisions about their own bodies. And while Chris was originally apprehensive to share their HRT journey with the rest of the world, witnessing firsthand the conversation they've helped start by doing so that has made the entire ordeal worth it. As for Mr. Beast responding to this dramatic lifestyle change and one of his most trusted colleagues and best friends, well, he couldn't be happier or more supportive, sending out his well wishes while also defending Chris from the internet trolls questioning whether or not they will be able to be a respectable father. Not willing to let others fight their battles for them, Chris also defended their relationship with their son by informing us that nothing has changed and that Tucker still spends as much time with Chris as possible. That being said, according to Chris, his marriage is effectively over. The last time one of them posted an image with each other online was when Katie did so on her Instagram page Christmas of 2021. Since then, a few weeks ago, Chris confirmed though social media that a couple had separated and were in the process of finalizing things, but that it would still take some time to iron out everything. It is quite possible that they're still trying to figure out the role that they have in one another's life while moving forward. They might have to continue doing so until Chris completes their journey in the meantime. That will bring us in the latest episode of Before They Were Famous to a close. Thanks so much for watching. And before you head out elsewhere for the date, considering answering the following question. What's the most shocking revelation your long-term partner has ever surprised you with? Let me know if you ever discovered your partner who wasn't who you thought they were in the comments down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure that you never miss an episode. My name is Kyle Moore, and if you dug this video out on Chris Tyson's coming up, be sure to keep an eye on watching because coming up right now is a look into the life of Dylan Mulvaney. I'll see you next time. Boom. Before becoming one of the most popular LGBTQ plus creators on all of TikTok with more than 10 million followers, eagerly anticipating each new installment of her Days of Girlhood series, will trans influencer and content creator Dylan Mulvaney, well, they were born on December 29th, 1996 in San Diego, California, where she began life as a baby boy born to James and Donna Mulvaney. In point of fact, well, the Mulvaneys, they are a rather well-connected family that have been synonymous with the San Diego area for a while now. Now, Dylan's grandfather, Father James Mulvaney Sr. He was a lawyer and investment banker and former president of the San Diego Padres baseball team. Now James's other job would see him act as a banker and a businessman for the controversial financer and industrialist Arnold Smith. Now that's one of Richard Nixon's earliest supporters as well as a friend to mobsters like Mo Dalitz. Meanwhile, Dylan's father, James Jr., well, he would grow up to become a San Diego area philanthropist known for baking and handing out cookies to strangers for free. So I can see the core on how things changed, right? Now, and as it turns out, well, after Dylan Mulvaney was born, well, her father was suffering from drug and alcohol abuse. Now, wanting to sober up for his new child, well, James, he gave up narcotics and he began baking cookies as a means to keep himself occupied while staying clean. And now he's known all around the city as the Cookie Man. With her dad struggling for the first few years of her life, well, Dylan didn't exactly have an open or vulnerable role model in her life as a child, which needless to say, well, made the fact that she identified as a girl and Instead of a boy, well, hard to reconcile. Instead, Dylan suppressed these feelings as best she could and grew up a self-described theater kid, eventually finding her calling when she began attending the Cincinnati Conservatory of Music for musical theater. When she wasn't learning how to sing, dance, and entertain, will Dylan also work behind the counter at a Froyo store alongside a whole host of other retail jobs that included Lush as well as a brand Melville. But no matter how much she loved fashion and a little good old-fashioned retail therapy, well, it was performing on stage 
stage that always made Dylan feel the most complete. Now, she once told Girl Boss that when it came to the Cincinnati Conservatory, there I learned how to be confident. I think what's so great about having a degree like musical theater is it prepared me to perform. And that's what TikTok really is. It's performance in a way, as much as you're playing yourself, you're still giving the energy to a character. Now, following her graduation from the conservatory, well, Dylan would almost immediately find herself auditioning for TV and theater roles in San Diego, but she was quickly confronted by the realization that producers were only willing to hire her for male roles. Like when she was brought in as a new cast member for the Broadway musical, The Book of Mormon. Now, at first, Dylan wound up hiding away much of her own identity so that she could be considered for opportunities in the industry. But after appearing on series like The Ellen DeGeneres Show, as well as The Price is Right, the pandemic would bring her production of The Book of Mormon to a close and leave Dylan with more questions than answers. When the pandemic hit in 2020, well, Dylan Mulvaney, she was still a member of The Book of Mormon on Broadway, but only a few weeks later, she found herself jobless and back at home with her parents in a sense that, uh, well, it was the first time since she was little that she really had the time to ask herself, who are you without acting and without playing a boy part? Now, when Dylan got down to thinking about these tough questions, well, she was shocked to discover that she was finished living her life as a boy. Now, without knowing exactly what would happen next, well, she downloaded TikTok and started producing comedy style clips that included throwing a non-binary gender reveal party for herself. I'm Dylan. Today is my birthday and I'm throwing a gender reveal party. And no, I'm not pregnant. It's for myself. I'm non-binary. Now, as she continued to grow and entertain her audience throughout the next year or so, well, Dylan also discovered more truths about herself. For instance, she realized that the more she distanced herself from being a boy, well, the more she embraced her feelings of femininity. And while she originally believed that she might be non-binary, in actual fact, she's a trans woman. When she came out as such, well, Dylan's TikTok feed, it exploded in popularity, thanks in large part to a series she created titled Days of Girlhood. Now, while many online have rallied around Dylan's content since she first broke through in early 2022, well, there are some people out there who would like to watch her fail, and it might not be who you'd necessarily expect. Take fellow trans woman, Caitlyn Jenner, for instance, who has referred to Dylan in the past as an absurdity and accused her of exposing too much of herself in public. What? Now, that same month, while Dylan would meet with President Joe Biden for an interview in which the two discussed trans rights, with the president telling Mulvaney that, uh, well, no state should have the right to block transgender people's access to healthcare. Then two months later on December 16, 2022, well, Dylan announced in triumphant fashion that it was surgery day and shared footage of herself getting dropped off at a medical center to undergo facial feminization surgery. Now, for those of you who don't know, well, FFS, it encompasses a broad range of procedures that changes the shape of the face to make it look more feminine. Now, examples include having your hairline moved to create a smaller forehead, lips and cheekbones being augmented, as well as jaws and chins being reshaped shaped and resized. Now, after sharing a number of images of her recovery from her hospital bed in late January of 2023, well, Dylan would finally introduce to the rest of the world her brand new face. Now, just a few short weeks later, well, Dylan's 365-day journey towards becoming a woman well, would culminate with a live show in New York City that stood as a tribute to everything she'd accomplished and endured. But Dylan's celebration was still only just getting started. Now, since becoming one of the LGBTQ plus's largest pop culture icons, well, Dylan Mulvaney has had to deal with both the good and the bad. Now, on the negative side of things, will her dating life, it isn't moving quite as quickly as she once hoped it might. On the opposite side of things is how much incredible bank she's earning. Now, she explained how her fortunes have turned to People Magazine, where she told them, I struggled for so long in having the entertainment industry accept me and have a place for me. Now, because the internet and all these followers have decided to love me, it's creating these opportunities that I didn't have before. Nonetheless, that comedic video appears to have rallied up anti-trans outrage across right-wing media groups, as well as musicians like Kid Rock, who took such exceptions to this new design, that he released a video of himself shooting multiple Bud Light beer cans while wearing what else? Well, a mega hat. Now, the owners of Bud Light, they have promised to continue working with influencers like Dylan, telling the folks at BuzzFeed News they're doing so to authentically connect with audiences across various demographics. Now, meanwhile, other brands like Kate Spade, Mac, Neutrogena, and others, well, they've also shown no qualms supporting Dylan and connecting with her millions of followers in the process. As for 
for what might come next in Dylan's career? Well, she's currently in the process of pitching a talk show while also writing a couple different books. She'll, of course, continue making as much social media content as she can, but her other commitments might mean that it's, uh, well, no longer on a daily basis. Now, if the talk show doesn't turn into a reality, will she also consider turning Days of Girlhood into a podcast or a potential script rom-com series with an early 2000s vibe? Now, until that happens, well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see where Dylan Mulvaney's career takes her. After all, this has been her before they're famous. Thanks for checking out this video, guys. Before I leave you guys, I have a question for you. What's the angle? a big name brand has ever made you and what did they do was it uh kendall jenner and pepsi was it uh mulvaney here with bud light let me know yours in the comments down below